first time I heard this statement, we're not called to go to church, but be the church, was very impactful for me. I'd never heard anybody say that before, but when I heard it, I absolutely knew that it was true. And it's changed the entire trajectory of my life. It's changed how I am as a man, as a father, and as a husband, and most of all, as a disciple of Jesus Christ. You know, I've worked with a lot of leaders and a lot of different Christians over the years, and I, sometimes I'll ask this question, when I say church, what's the first thing that comes to mind? And they, these are some of the things I'll often hear. Hypocrites, uh, they'll think building, they think they want my money. Uh, sometimes people think the church is where I go to get fed. Uh, I could go on and on with the different descriptors and ideas of what the church is. When I hear descriptors like that of Jesus' church, I wonder why would anybody want to be part of that? Early on in my walk with Jesus, I had a lot of the same views and a lot of the same thoughts about the church. I found it very easy to be critical and find fault and find reasons not to get involved and reasons not to even go. And they were good reasons in my own mind. And it wasn't until I got involved and got in the game as a disciple of Jesus Christ and started to serve and be a benefit to the church that that began to change. Every one of us that have received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and we believe that God raised from the dead, those of us that are saved, we're disciples of Jesus. And we know that a disciple of Jesus, we get this from Matthew 419, where Jesus said to Peter, come follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. So we say a disciple is one who's committed to following Jesus, one who's committed to being changed by Jesus, and one who's committed to the mission of Jesus. Also, we know if we're gonna follow Jesus, we're going to do everything in relationship with other people, because that's exactly what Jesus modeled. And so it's in relationship where you and I begin to find out who we are and our place in the church and how God uses us and benefits other people by us being part of that. Every one of us plays a part in the church as a disciple of Jesus Christ. It's not an option. And when it's lived out in his church, the world sees something absolutely different from the things that have been conjured up in their mind or experiences that have caused them to think the church is other than what it is. The amazing but challenging part of being a family, being a church together, is that we're together. And when we're together, it brings up all sorts of opportunities to disagree, to get hurt, to get in a fight, say things that, that shouldn't have been said. Also gives us opportunity to practice forgiveness, patience, kindness, gentleness. Each of us will make a decision if, I, if I'm gonna fight for relationship. Am I gonna do what's necessary to restore the relationship to what God intends it to be? And that's gonna take humility, it's gonna take wisdom, it's gonna take dependence on the Holy Spirit, and it's also gonna be the fruit of us abiding with Jesus Christ. Scripture tells us that he gave prophets, evangelists, teachers, pastors, the responsibility of raising up people, or raising up the saints for works of service, meaning, it doesn't just stop at somebody being a preacher or a teacher. Their purpose is actually to equip us to be Jesus' church. And when we do that, we grow in spiritual maturity. And the reason we grow in spiritual maturity, once again, is we're doing ministry together. We're in relationship with Jesus and we're in relationship with each other. And as we do that, it gives us opportunity to practice the things that I talked about earlier, forgiveness, patience, kindness, bearing with one another. And when we do that, it sets us apart from the rest of the world and everybody wants to be around people that live that way. There's some things I ask myself and I give myself reminders. And I ask myself, what is my part in the body? And what am I doing? Sometimes I ask myself, what am I doing or what am I resisting or what am I afraid of? The wonderful thing about being in a life group and, and, and being in a family, being in the body, is I can process those questions and those thoughts and those fears and concerns with other people. And that's where I find encouragement. And oftentimes the people that I'm close to see the good things in me that I don't see and oftentimes don't want to see. That's why we do life together. That's why we're the church. And we don't just go to church, we choose to be the church. What is my part in the body, in the church today, in Jesus' church? And sometimes the things that I know I'm supposed to be doing, I resist and I, and I struggle with wanting to follow, wanting to obey, or even wanting to believe. And the benefit of being part of Jesus' church is I have people in my life. I'm in relationship with people, in my life group, in my men's group, and just in the people I work with. And because I have those people, those people see things in me that I don't see in myself, and they notice things, they know how to encourage me, and they also know how to challenge me and remind me of what's true and keep me on the path as a disciple of Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus tells us in Scripture in John 15, 
that we're to abide in him and that he will abide in us. It means we're gonna stay with him, we're gonna continue with him. If we are and we're gonna be Jesus' church, it's gonna be because we spend time with him, we're gonna spend time with his people, and we're gonna choose to follow Jesus Christ, we're gonna choose to be changed by him, and we're gonna be about his mission. And Jesus makes it very clear that anything we do apart from him amounts to nothing. So the absolute importance of abiding with Jesus Christ and his people, which is his church. Years ago, somebody invited me into a life group and invited me into being part of Jesus' church. Not a spectator, not somebody who sits on the fence and a critic, which I was, but I got in the game. And it was life-changing and it still is life-changing for me today. And through that, I was also invited into other opportunities to serve and be part of Jesus' church. And as I've done that, I've done that with other people. And what happened is relationships begin to be built. And in those relationships, I learned things about myself and others, and I got an opportunity to practice forgiving, being loved, loving others, being patient and kind. And that's Jesus' desire for each of us to grow in spiritual maturity in his church as we do life together. This is what I wanna invite you and encourage you to be a part of. Jesus said this to his disciples, and we're his disciples, so he's saying the same thing to us. As I have loved you, so love one another. By this, the world will know you're my disciples because of your love for one another. If you and I will choose to be Jesus' church as we abide with him, and as we do life together in relationship, on mission, we will be irresistible to the world and the world has a chance to know the Lord Jesus Christ.